Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to News Dosen. If you start to look at the second half of July for Xbox Game Pass, it's actually pretty extraordinary. I mean, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, but there are several games releasing day one into Xbox Game Pass during the second half of July and, well, they announced yet another day one release today. Yeah, they're really showing the power of Xbox Game Pass right now, and if you are a subscriber, you have a lot to look forward to, and we'll kind of go over all of that later in the video. Now also, one of the most highly anticipated Nintendo Switch exclusives releasing later this year looks to have gotten a visual upgrade, and I think fans are really going to like that, so we will talk about that as well. To start today off though, we're actually going to take a look at an upcoming fighting game that I know several of you all are looking forward to, and that is King of Fighters 15. Of course, King of Fighters is a long-running franchise with a dedicated fan base, but really, if you do like fighting games, this is probably going to be one of the more exciting releases that's coming to these next-generation platforms. And we do have some really good news concerning that because King of Fighters 15 not only announced a release window for quarter one of 2022, but they also announced platforms. And yeah, let's just go ahead and check this out. So King of Fighters 15 will release for the PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, PC through Steam and the Epic Games Store, and then also the big surprise, Xbox Series X and S. And no, you did not hear that wrong. King of Fighters will be returning to Xbox once again after the last installment skipped the platform. So this is actually very welcome news for Xbox fans. King of Fighters 14 did skip out on the Xbox One, and Xbox hasn't gotten a new King of Fighters since I want to say 2011, which was when King of Fighters 13 released. So by the time King of Fighters 15 releases, it will have been more than 10 years since Xbox got its last King of Fighters installment. So again, this is very welcome news, but whether you play on PlayStation, PC, or Xbox, you might want to keep an eye on this game if you do like fighting games. There's a reason that King of Fighters has a dedicated fan base, and like I said before, this is one of the better looking fighting games that's releasing early in the generation for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox series. Now, speaking of next generation games, it looks like Assassin's Creed will be going through a pretty major change this generation, and fans are not exactly thrilled about what we're hearing so far. So this was originally being reported by Jason Schreier over on Bloomberg this morning, but it was later confirmed by Ubisoft themselves. And yes, they are working on a new Assassin's Creed title codenamed Assassin's Creed Infinity. And the reason that fans are kind of upset about this game is in how it's actually being explained. So we're just going to kind of go over all the details that we do know about this Assassin's Creed Infinity game. And then I'll just kind of let you all be the judge on what you think about this game and how it's being explained. Now, the first big change that you're going to notice about Assassin's Creed Infinity is that it's actually being co-developed by Ubisoft Montreal and then Ubisoft Quebec. And that is a major shift for the Assassin's Creed franchise. Typically, these two teams will alternate working on Assassin's Creed titles in a similar way to what you see with Activision and their Call of Duty games. One year, Treyarch will work on a Call of Duty game, and the next year it might be Infinity Ward, and then you have Sledgehammer. And the reason that they do this is so they can, they can get more of these games out at a quicker pace. And that's what Ubisoft does with Assassin's Creed. But why are they actually joining the two together to work on one title? And that's where things get a little bit more interesting. So what's happening here is that Assassin's Creed looks to be a massive online platform that will evolve over time and offers multiple games in one package. And yes, that is a huge departure for the Assassin's Creed franchise. So instead of seeing Assassin's Creed use both of these studios to release a new Assassin's Creed game every couple years, we're actually just going to see them release one single game and then release content for that game over time. Now, we don't know exactly how they're going to handle all this just yet, but it does sound like this game will have some pretty big expansions post-release that will completely change the setting, and you might get new characters, and, you know, it's kind of how MMOs work. You're going to get large expansions that can completely change the game, and I think that's how Assassin's Creed Infinity is going to work as well. And for that matter, we have started to see more of these live service releases here recently, whether that be something like Destiny or even Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite is another game that's kind of releasing as a platform that will evolve over time. And now we're going to see something similar here with Assassin's Creed. 
I don't really look at a live service game as necessarily a bad thing if you handle it right. But at the same time, I still know that this is a drastic change for Assassin's Creed, which is typically known as a single player driven game. And I think that's one of the big concerns right now. Are we going to see Assassin's Creed shift into having a big multiplayer focus? And that is a big concern for the Assassin's Creed community. But I don't think we should really get too wrapped up on that until we actually see what this game is. We don't know if there is going to be a main focus on multiplayer or not. I think we just need to kind of wait it out and see what happens with all this. But yeah, it definitely seems like Assassin's Creed is going to get, go through a pretty drastic change this generation with them focusing on a live service game. Let me know what you think about all this though. Do you like what we're hearing about Assassin's Creed Infinity or do you kind of wish that they would just continue doing what they've been doing all along? Let me know in the comments below. Next up, let's talk about Xbox Game Pass yet again because, well, guess what? They announced another day one release for the month of July, and this time it's for a small independent game by the name of Omno. Now, if you've been following this channel for a while now, you may actually recognize this game because I actually highlighted this game back during the Xbox independent event earlier this year because I thought this game really stood out back then. And seeing this game here again, I'm just gonna go ahead and stand by that because I really do think this game looks interesting. Now, I don't know if this game is gonna turn out to be good or not, but I, I, at the very least, I think it looks intriguing. Omno is this puzzle platformer and it just looks like it has a lot of heart and soul and actually about that Omno is being developed by just one single developer that apparently had an idea for a game originally way back when he was working as an animator mostly in tv and movies so to see this animator come over to video games and make a game like this you can definitely tell the animations are really solid here and it's got this beautiful simplistic art style I just think that if you like puzzle platformers, this is one to keep an eye on. Again, I don't know if it's going to turn out to be good or not, but that's the beauty of Xbox Game Pass. I always say that, but it really is. I've said this before, but the thing that I personally like about Xbox Game Pass the most is discovering new games that maybe I wouldn't have tried otherwise. And this is one of those games that fits right into that category. I'm not sure if I would have heard about this game if it wasn't for Xbox showcasing this and then now releasing it day one into Xbox Game Pass. And if you really start to look at things, the second half of July is filled with games just like this. Not only do you have Omno, which again, I think looks really interesting, but you also have five other day one releases. So let's just go and take a look at the second half of July for Xbox Game Pass. On July 20th, you have Chris Tells, which I talked about this game yesterday, but it looks like a really good turn-based JRPG type of game with a bit of a Chrono Trigger flair to it. It's got a bit of that time travel narrative that is so beloved in Chrono Trigger, and I'm definitely really interested in this title in specific. I mean, the art style in specific looks absolutely amazing, but I'm hoping that the game is just as good. But then on the 22nd, you have Last Stop, which is a narrative-driven game set in the present-day London. If you're looking for something with a little bit more of an involved story, this is coming from the creators of the award-winning Virginia, so you have to keep that in mind. And then, of course, on the 27th, you have Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I know Xbox fans have been waiting for that one for a long time. Obviously, Flight Simulator was one of the best rated games that released in 2020 for the PC, but now it's finally going to be heading to the Xbox Series, and I know a lot of people are going to be really excited to see how that looks on the Xbox Series, because it's an absolute visual showcase. Also, you have The Forgotten City, which is an RPG that originally started as a Skyrim mod. And of course, on the 29th, you not only have Omna, which we already talked about, but you also have The Ascent, which is a highly anticipated isometric cyberpunk RPG. And I think The Ascent in specific really has the opportunity of taking a lot of people by surprise. I mean, every time I've seen this game, it really does pop off the screen in terms of its visuals and gameplay alike. And yes, it will officially release on July 29th. And, and in fact, you all voted for this as your most anticipated game for the month of July. But yeah, when you do start to look at things, that final 10 days of July really does have a lot of these games that are maybe a little bit smaller as they are independent games. But there's a lot of potential with each and every one of these releases. And again, like I said before, this is why I love Xbox Game Pass so much. I like discovering these new games and there's just so many of those releases in the second half of July. 
yeah, I'm going to have a lot of fun checking these games out myself. And if you are a subscriber to Xbox Game Pass, then you have a lot to look forward to in the month of July. Now, speaking of Xbox, and we'll just kind of go over this one real quick because it's currently just a rumor, but Xbox Italy is using Dark Souls 3 for FPS boost advertising on Instagram. And that's actually really interesting because currently Dark Souls 3 has not officially been announced for FPS boosted mode. Now, of course, with FPS boosted mode, you can double frame rate and Dark Souls 3 currently on Xbox is locked to 30 frames per second. Now, that's always been kind of strange because for whatever reason, Namco Bandai actually unlocked the frame rate on PlayStation, so it can actually run at 60 frames per second on the PlayStation 4 Pro and in the PlayStation 5. But for whatever reason, the Xbox One X version was locked to 30 frames per second. So this is where FPS boosted mode comes into the rescue and we could possibly finally see Dark Souls 3 reach 60 frames per second on the Xbox series. And that would be, of course, very good news. Obviously, the Dark Souls franchise is known as being some of the best RPGs of all time, and I absolutely concur with that. The thing about all this is, though, is that if this is true, there's speculation that we might be getting another big update for FPS boosted mode. The last time we got an FPS boosted update, Xbox announced a ton of games all at once. So it is very possible that if they are indeed preparing to make an announcement, we could see several games enter FPS boosted mode. So I'm going to go ahead and cross my fingers that we'll get an official announcement on that here sometime soon. And if they do make an official announcement, of course, I will keep you updated on all of that. Moving on, though, let's go ahead and talk about one of the more highly anticipated Nintendo Switch exclusives that's releasing later this year, and that's Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And the thing about this game in particular is that when they first announced it, there was quite a bit of criticism when it came to the visuals. The art style is definitely different for Pokemon games. It's got this chibi art style that maybe the originals were really well known for, but those were with pixelated graphics. But now here we're seeing Pokemon with a chibi art style and in 3D. And not everybody loved the combination. But on top of the directions that they went with the art style, everything kind of did fall flat with that initial trailer. And that is something that I said in the past that I think that they need to do a little bit more outlining with these characters and maybe give it more of a cell shaded look. And while the good news is that it does look like that there's already been a visual upgrade with Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. So hidden away in the Nintendo Switch OLED reveal, they did actually show Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, and it looks to be an updated version. Because if you actually look close, it overall looks much better than when we originally saw Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Back when we originally saw it, everything looked kind of flat. And if you look at the backpack and hat in specific to in the original trailer, there was not really much details when it came to the characters or the items themselves. And it kind of added to that flat overall look that a lot of people really disliked in that initial trailer. But here in the updated trailer, you can actually see, especially with the hat and the backpack in specific, there's a lot more detail happening here. You can see some actual outlining this time, and it just gives it an overall better, more crisp look. But even more noticeable, you can see with the background in the updated trailer that everything looks a little bit more soft. In that original trailer, everything was real vibrant and eye-popping, but here, with some added lighting, everything just looks a little bit more soft. Both the background and characters do look much better in this updated trailer. So for those who were a little upset with the way the original trailer looked, you know, again, the good news here is that it does look like there's already been a visual upgrade from when we originally saw it. Of course, that's how development works. When we see these early trailers, we do need to keep in mind that the game is still in development and things can obviously improve. And we're seeing that here with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Now, if you just don't like the art direction in general and maybe you don't like the chibi art style, that's probably not going to change. And, and that is something that I'm going to go ahead and note here. We still haven't seen an updated look on the overworld itself. And that's where a lot of the complaints was with Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. But I think this is still a great sign for fans who are looking forward to this release. I know I'm looking forward to it myself as I am a big, big Pokemon fan. And if you're like me, this is really good overall news. 
And moving on over to the poll of the day, Nintendo announced the Switch OLED model yesterday. There's been a lot of lead up to the Switch Pro announcement, though this particular announcement with the OLED model has left a lot of people seemingly disappointed. And that's because there's not an actual spec upgrade. Instead, it looks like Nintendo focused on the handheld side of things with an OLED screen, you got a better stand and then enhanced audio. Those are all very nice additions and everything, but the big question is whether or not it's worth it, especially considering they raised the price by $50. So I asked you all, did Nintendo do enough to entice you to buy a Switch OLED model? And wow, you all were not happy with the announcement of the Switch OLED model. Only 6% of you as of this recording said yes, while 88% said no. And truthfully, I can definitely understand the disappointment. I think this is a nice upgrade if you do primarily play in handheld mode, which I do. This actually fixes my biggest complaints with the current Switch, which is the audio and then the screen itself. I've been a big believer in the OLED screen since the original Vita, so I'm really happy with those two upgrades. But I do understand why people are disappointed here. The fact that the Switch OLED is $50 more without offering a spec upgrade is definitely a little disappointing. I think it would better be priced at $300 and then marking down the original Switch to $250. I think that would make a little bit more sense. But I mean, if you currently own a Switch already, there's just not a lot of reasons here to actually upgrade unless, again, like I said before, if you play in handheld mode and you just want a better screen and an enhanced audio. But even then, like I said, does it actually merit an extra $50 compared to the original? And I think that might be a little bit questionable, especially when you have a device like the Xbox Series for $300 and then the PS4 Digital goes for $400. So it puts the Switch OLED in a bit of a weird spot, though it is important to keep in mind that this is a handheld device. But even then, it still seems to be in a bit of a weird spot. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.